Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Um, it's a little bit late and the day is approaching its end, but I hope you, you have uh, still of the focus. Um, the, this presentation is going to be 30 minutes long because it's no longer a conference track, it's tools in action track, and it's going to be more interactive and more demo based. So the previous session was about data engineering and some Apache projects in this space. So I'm continuing in the, in the same spirit. My name is Maria Selakovic. I work as a developer advocate at Create.io, which is a company that develops and maintains CreateDB database, which is, of course, <laughs> open source as well as Apache Airflow. And my topic for today is going to be about dynamic workflow orchestration with Apache Airflow and CreateDB. So before I start, let's take a closer look into the agenda for today. Um, I will first give a short overview of what dynamic data orchestration is, then how Airflow and CreateDB work, how you can start using it, how, then how you can connect it, because this is, this is important. If you are going to use more tools in the same tool chain, it's, it's very important to understand how you can connect them. Then I will present you the idea of the, of the database workflow, uh, which I implemented and I want to demonstrate today. Then we will talk about one very interesting feature of Airflow called dynamic task mapping that allows uh, you to build dynamic data orchestrations. Then we will um, step into the demo. And finally, um, let's discuss how you can continue from, from here. If you're, if you're new in the space, what would be the good uh, resources and material for, for you to actually deepen your knowledge in this, this area? So let's start first with dynamic data orchestration and what do we mean when we say dynamic data orchestration? So orchestration in general models def the dependencies between different data tasks in a heterogeneous environments. And what does it mean? Uh, in these workflows, you always have to handle various integrations. Um, it could be with data lakes, data warehouses, or any cloud-based tools. And this Heterogeneity actually brings some sort of complexity in your workflow. I ideally, you would like to have a tooling that can handle these integrations. And why um, we are talking today about dynamic data orchestration is because <clears throat> very often you cannot predict the size or frequencies in your data sources or other dynamic features. So one example of data orchestration could be for example, uh, collecting the data, then storing the data in some storage, and then doing some sort of analytics, something like ETL process. For those who are working in data engineering fear, you're pretty much familiar with this. And today, actually, I'm going to show you how you can implement dynamic data orchestration with um, Apache Airflow and you, by using CreateDB as, uh, as a data storage. And before I continue, I just would like to understand <laughs> how many of you have heard of CreateDB? Okay, it's not that bad actually, <laughs> so a few of you. And how of you have heard about Airflow? Okay, that's, that's much better. <laughs> so um, let's start first introducing CreateDB because yeah, very few people know about it. So CreateDB has been in active development since 2014. It's a distributed, horizontally scaling uh, database and open source on departure license 4.0. Actually, we like to say that CreateDB combines the best of NoSQL and SQL world. What does it mean? It actually has a NoSQL backend and gives you the scalability and flexibility of NoSQL database, but you interact with the CreateDB using SQL interface. It also implements <coughs> Postgres via protocol, which makes it easy to use with, with tools that actually support Postgres database. And the CreateDB uh, is a good uh, database solution it's not the best for all use cases, but it's perfect choice if you have to deal with the data that are not transactional, that are structured or semi-structured data or mix of both. 
If you need to use fast analytical queries, for example, full text search is very efficient in CreateDB, and if you need scalable deployments. So CreateDB scales horizontally by just adding few nodes and uh, is empowered with NoSQL backend, so the scalability is kind of a feature that you can expect from CreateDB. Uh, without going into more details about CreateDB, I could actually spend <laughs> another 30 minutes only talking about architecture and the benefits. So let's talk how you can run it. Um, it's, it's relatively easy. Um, you want to run open source version, you run it on Docker, and then you can access via HTTP protocol <coughs> uh, the admin UI that allows you to monitor your CreateDB cluster to run some queries, import data. But you can also run uh, CreateDB Cloud. You can use the free trial uh, that allows you to run, um, that gives you actually some credit, I think like $200, and then you can run uh, for example, single node instance for approximately a month. So that would be like some general idea about, about CreateDB Cloud free trial. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty easy to, to run and use in open source and cloud environment. So uh, now let's, let's go to the Apache Airflow. Um, so glad to, to hear that most of you are familiar with this. This is open source workflow management platform, very, very popular um, and very community driven. Uh, so it actually allows you to model data orchestrations or actually any workflow orchestrations uh, as a directed acyclic graph uh, where the node of the graph represents a task and uh, the directions uh, in which these tasks executes are uh, represented by the edges. So this is one very simple example of how you can, how you can model <coughs> uh, your orchestration workflow. And important thing to mention is it's done programmatically. So if you're familiar with Python, you can start using Airflow pretty, pretty easily. So the task in Airflow is defined as a basic unit of execution. You can see it as, I don't know, some small Python script or SQL query. So usually, um, you define your workflow as a series of tasks where one task, for example, depends on the execution of the previous task. So like where this um, time dependency is, is kind of important. And there are many ways to start with Airflow. I would like to uh, show you how you can do this with the Astro uh, command line interface. Astro command line interface is an open source tool managed and developed by astronomer company. And uh, it's actually very easy to start. Once you install Astro, you create a new project directory, you say Astro dev in it, and you initialize all the, actually you initialize your Airflow project, and this generates all the files that you need to start um, the first um, Airflow DAG. To start the project, you call Astro dev start. It runs all components of the Airflow that needs to run. And then uh, the one of the probably most important component for you is Airflow UI, which you can as well access um, in your web browser via HTTP, uh, via HTTP protocol. So now uh, that you are familiar with both tools, not really familiar, but you have idea <laughs> what these tools are. So let's, let's see how you can connect, uh, connect them. What is what? What you need to do actually to run Airflow with with CreateDB, or actually to execute any sort of queries on CreateDB from the Airflow, uh, you need to create uh, a new connection. And I will show you how to do this in the Airflow. So you go to this is Airflow UI, very nice, simple looking, easy to navigate. If you go to admin and connections, you go to CreateDB connection. So imagine you're running um, CreateDB on Docker. You say, okay, I need a new connection. Let's call it CreateDB connection. Um, the type of the connection is Postgres um, because CreateDB is Postgres compatible in most of the cases for let's say 99% of features. Then I need to specify the host, um, the login. Per default, you don't need to, you don't uh, create any password, and your CreateDB cluster is listening on port port five four three two. 
um, I can test this connection, connection successfully tested, so now we can actually use, uh, we can run CreDB from Airflow. So, um, how you actually run queries uh, from the Airflow, uh, you use a class or operator that is available in Airflow called Postgres operator, um, which is actually used for specifying any task involving uh, interaction with Postgres um, or Postgres compatible database. Um, to run this task, you need to specify a couple of parameters. The first one is task ID, then connection ID. Remember, we already created the connection. We use the same ID, in this case, CreDB connection, and then you specify the query you need to run. So in this case, I just want to s uh, list uh, all the users that are available in my CreDB cluster. So very, very simple. Hopefully, this was understandable, or at least uh, you could understand most of it. Uh, now, I wanted to, to actually discuss and to present you the use case um, I implemented and I will demo today. So my use case um, is hypothetical use case. Um, it's actually, for some of you could be realistic, for some of you could be, you know, like this is a not so great, but uh, it actually shows some important features of both tools. So the idea is that you import files from, for example, S3 storage to CreDB and you want to check if these values that you imported have certain properties. For example, they're in some range. So let's say we have some files that are coming from a data lake every day and they are stored in our S3 instance. And we want this data to transfer to CreDB. So CreDB needs to have um, a table that actually is going to store this data. And once we store this data, we, for example, want to um, check whether the values we are importing um, are in certain range. For example, in this case, let's say between zero and one. So you see, we have a couple of tasks involved in a workflow and we want, for example, to run it in some sort of regular uh, intervals. So how we are going to do this? First, we need to think about one challenge here. Um, let's say we are, we are getting data from some data lake or some sensors, for example, to our S3 storage. But we don't know how many files or how many data we are going to have um, on a daily basis. We cannot predict this. So how many tasks are we going to create in Airflow depends on how many files we get on our S3 instance. So we don't know this upfront. And here it's important to mention the feature called dynamic task mapping that is available since Airflow 2.3, and this was released this year, which actually supports uh, creation of, um, dynamic creation of tasks in runtime. So it could be very similar to idea of creating a loop, uh, depending on some input, and for each, for example, loop iteration, you create a single task. Now, you don't have to do this, you just need to give the input to the scheduler and scheduler will create as many tasks as necessary based on your input. So this feature is supported with a method called expand. And let's see how does it work. So the expand is called on a task itself and you pass to it um, a list or dictionary of inputs. So for example, we have a simple task, we add two numbers. And for this input, the first instance of the task will return number two and second instance will return number three. However, we can also set some constant arguments that are going to be constant for every task instance. And we can do this using method partial. And for example, in this case, we can say n, parameter n is going to be constant for every task instances, but we are going to use different parameter, different values for x parameter. So in this case, the first task instance will return three, the second will return four. So this is just a general idea behind dynamic task mapping. So you don't need to think how many task instances uh, are needed for, uh, for the case when you have some dynamism that you need to handle. You just need to actually uh, 
pass the results to the scheduler and based on the on these results he will create it will create as necessary task instances um, as, as it as it um, requires so before going to demo uh, just one short um, thing about uh, how actually you import uh, data to CreateDB. Um, as CreateDB is Postgres compatible, for you familiar with Postgres, you're going to be familiar with the copy from statement. So in CreateDB, you can import the content of a CSV or JSON file um, from a given URI to a table. And CreateDB currently supports two URI schemes, uh, which is like a local file and S3. So in case you want to actually uh, import some data from S3 bucket, you need to specify kind of the file path using the A AWS credentials and S3 bucket uh, in, the, in the copy from statement. So finally, for this use case, we would need four different Airflow tasks. The first one will fetch all files that are um, that are hosted or like that are residing uh, in, in S3 storage. And for this, um, on the implementation level, you will use um, the operator or the class called S3 hook. Um, then uh, for each of these files, you will create a copy from statement uh, using Python operator. To import data to CreateDB, you will use Postgres operator. And finally, to check whether the value is in certain range, um, you actually need to use operator called SQL column check operator. So in Airflow, actually you can find operators for many cloud-based and database tools. So that can support you in, in big variety of, of uh, workflow orchestrations. So for, for today, I, I choose to show you how these operators work, but of course on the, on the Airflow in the Airflow documentation, you can find a really rich set of operators that you can use to implement various orchestration tasks. So let's now go um, to see how this Python code looks like. So it's, it's relatively simple. I hope you can see it. So essentially, you first need to initialize a new DAG. And this is kind of code that is um, the same for any DAG you're, you're going to create. It requires you to specify some parameters like the DAG name, the description, the start date, the schedule interval, so you can run it once a day or once an hour or once, I know, every three hours. So it gives you this flexibility to choose how often you're going to, to run your <coughs> workflow and uh, Catch up in this case means, okay, do I want to run the previous instances of this uh, Airflow DAG in, in this case? Now I choose not, but if you, for example, say I want to run once a day starting from 10 days ago, then it will run actually 10 different DAGs for every single day up to today. So then you need, as I said, uh, we need to implement four different tasks. So the first one is actually fetching all the files from S3. Um, this is pretty easy to, to, to implement because you just need instance of S3 hook. And then you need to list keys given the bucket name and prefix value. So for example, when I instantiate the task, I said, okay, for my S3 bucket and the prefix demo, slash file, give me all the files that, that are in this bucket. And this is the first task, simple. Then the second task is creating import statements. So for each of these files, I'm creating copy from statement uh, to the CreateDB, and I need um, some information uh, to create this copy from statement, as I already discussed, we need AWS credentials, S3 bucket name, and the path for each file. And that's more or less it. It returns the list of statements that we can now use in the Postgres operator. But because we don't know how many statements we will create, it depends on the number of files that are on S3, we will use dynamic task mapping to implement this data import 
So on Postgres operator, we'll call partial function. Uh, task ID and Postgres connection ID are going to be parameters that are going to remain the same across all instances. But what is going to be different is the SQL statement we need to execute. So in this case, we are giving the list of the import statements and then the scheduler in the airflow for each of these statements will execute one Postgres operator. How many depends on the runtime information. Finally, once the data are in, um, we want to see what is the range of values. If the values we imported actually satisfy the check we, we want to perform. Um, in this case, we use the instance of SQL column check operator with a connection ID that is, uh, that is actually specified uh, for our CreditB connection. Then we need to say on which table we want to perform this check and on which column. So, and we say we want to do the check on column value. And the check is that this value has a, is, the minimum value is greater than zero and the maximum value is less than one. So this column check operator is very flexible. It, you can uh, define several checks in one operator instance. So for example, if we have more columns, we can, we can add it in this column mapping field. And finally, to finish um, the Airflow script or like the specification of the duck, we need to show actually what is the relationship between these tasks. How do they execute? One of the easiest and the most elegant way to do this is with the chain function. So the chain function says, okay, list all the, all the tasks that need to execute in the order they need to execute. So in this case, we first execute a task that fetches S3 files, gener then the task that generates import statement, then the task that imports data to CreditDB, and finally the task that actually performs a data check. And now once we create a new DAC, we can go to the Airflow instance, and on the main, uh, main page of the Airflow UI, you will see the list of the DAGs that are available to run. So there are some DAGs that you, go, that you get with the Airflow installation. So for example, example DAG basis and advanced, this is something that actually is going to, to, to be generated once you create the Airflow project, but this is our DAG. And if we click on this DAG and go to graph, we can see the graph version of this DAG. So you will see how, what are the tasks and how they are connected. So now let's run it. So now once I run it, I can see actually what the tasks are running. And this is the first run of this DAG. If I click, for example, again on the graph function, I can see which tasks are executing currently. So this is relatively simple DAG. Uh, it executes fast. So I can see, for example, that this import data to CreditDB executed two times. It created two tasks uh, instances because we had two files on, uh, on our S3, in our S3 storage. And if I go back to the CreditDB, so this is how UI looks like. Um, I can go to tab called my tables and here actually I can see the schema of the table and how many records I have. Um, then I can click query and then I can list all the all the data that were that are imported from imported from the S3. Okay, that's how Airflow works with the CreditDB. You can use it for way more complicated uh, and more complex um, orchestration tasks. But for the purpose of this presentation, I choose something that is simple to understand and doable to do in 30 minutes. So let's recap the demo. So in the demo, I shown you how to specify the DAG, uh, what parameters you need to provide for DAG to run. Um, how you create task dependencies. Um, in, in this case, I use chain uh, function, but you can, for example, also use bitwise operator. 
Um, there are various operators that um, are built in in Airflow that allow you to run different types of tasks. For example, S3 hook um, allows you to access S3 bucket and to get the data that are there. For data quality checks, for example, you can use SQL column check operator. And I've also shown you how to create um, copy from statements for, for importing data to to create DB. So I have five minutes left. Um, I will use it to the to summary the talk and give you um, the list of resources um, as, as next steps if you if you like this and also to answer any questions you might have. So in this talk, I gave an overview of the Apache Airflow and CreateDB and how you can use it together to implement database orchestration tasks. Of course, Airflow can be used. Uh, for many other uh, orchestration tasks, not only those that involve database, so because it provides integration with many tools and many cloud solutions. Um, it's very easy to use it with CreateDB because CreateDB is Postgres compatible, it implements Postgres Fire protocol, and what is important, both tools are open source and easy to scale, so scalability is kind of a main feature of both tools. So if you want to learn more, um, I would like to first invite you to check um, um, some sites um, to see how actually Airflow and CreateDB works together on a more complex use case, um, to check documentation for CreateDB and Airflow and our communities, because both tools are very community driven. And also if you would like to see some code examples, um, you can check this um, Create Airflow tutorial that contains several decks that we maintain uh, for different um, database orchestration uh, workflows. So that was it for me. I'm just on time. Uh, thank you very much for attending this presentation. And I'm looking forward to your questions. So there are three minutes left if someone has some question now or if you uh, don't have questions now, but maybe you think later on, you can always send me an email. Yes? The data quality check in this case is smooth because all the values were the same. Data yes. Quality. If it had failed, what would have been the result? Uh, you will see the task failure in the airflow, and you can, for example, implement a callback called on failure in airflow. For example, you can send yourself email or Slack message to inform you that this task failed. So the data will still have been loaded? Yes, it can. But you can, for example, say, now I first load data to some temporary table, and then if it fails, I don't load it to the main table. You can, you can for example, create it in, in that way. Yes. Uh, can you use the same method? Yes. Uh, but all of them, but in this case, the DAG is just one followed by another. If you have four followed by another. Um, so there, there is an operator in in Airflow that allows you to have like um, to have a fork, depending on the condition. But you need to programmatically specify it. Sorry, I, I didn't hear her. Yes, you can specify different types of tasks. So, and, and all these tasks are actually kind of run with a different sort of operator. So you, one task can run on AWS, another task can run on database, another task can run on some maybe machine learning platform. So depending on, on what your use case is. If, does this answer your question? The tasks can also run in parallel, if you if you mean this. And then once the all tasks execute in parallel, then you can run those. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, this is the only use where I don't know Airflow, so uh -huh. I haven't used it. But Use it. Yeah. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> is it only programmatically that you can define the task? Yes, only programmatically. No, this is like only programmatically and using Python. Uh, 
I'm I'm pretty sure Airflow has some sort of integration with Kafka. I'm I'm I didn't I'm trying, um, but it sounds like this should be the probably integration that Airflow supports. But you can check documentation. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.